Okay, we are going However, to start off with the free tournament for Peko Peko Yama, the ultimate swordswoman. I'm pretty sure she just has like a normal deep voice or she something. She has like a pretty low voice, yeah. Yeah. I might lose my edge by staying here. Perhaps running along the beach would provide sufficient training. Then... All right, you run too. Leg strength is crucial for all things, and there is never a downside to training. I spent time today running countless laps along the beach with Pekko. I think Pekko and I grew a little closer. No. He will not benefit you at all to give me a present. I see. <laughs> it's funny. However, if you're willing to give me one, I shall gladly accept it. It's cool that we're hanging out, but we're not really talking about anything. Hey, Pekko, do you like Kendo? Yes. This conversation isn't progressing. Um, is your house a Kendo dojo? Sort of. S sort of? However. Is there something wrong with that? No, I was just wondering. Echo stare is really intense. Intense. It might be best if I change the subject. Um, let's see. A topic that probably won't offend her too much. Uh, I know. Echo, what level are you? Could it be? Are you talking about my kendo level? I don't have one. Huh? Dojo trainees typically earn levels corresponding to their years of training. However, I have no need for that. Why? Do people normally aim for that kind of advancement? No. I have no such aim. My destination has already been decided. Protect who I must protect, cut who I must cut. That alone is the original purpose of the sword. Wielding a blade in its truest sense is my aim. And so... That is my reason for existing. To achieve that, I have no use whatsoever for meaningless levels determined by arbitrary rules. I see. Echo isn't just a typical Kendo athlete. She truly is the ultimate swordswoman. How can I ask such a foolish question about levels? I don't really know much about Kendo, but I think you're really cool. You're kind of like a samurai. What? R r really cool? You say such strange things. N no one has ever said that to me before. Um, well, to thank. Never mind. She seems very awkward. Is she blushing? However, because of the path I've chosen, there are things I've lost as well. Warm, irreplaceable things. I remember this one. Yeah. What did you lose? Fluffiness. <laughs> Fluffiness? Yes. There are things that are warm, fluffy, and soft. The cat that came to visit the dojo, my childhood friend's dog, and even the finch I had as a pet. Why? But all animals can sense my menacing presence and run away from me. I just want to touch their soft fur and fluffy feathers to my heart's content. I, I see. That's really painful. You know the surprise? That's what you're going to talk about in Adventure from Pass or something. Oh, then what about asking Gundam if you can touch his hamsters next time you see him? Yeah, I remember this conversation yep. <laughs> for that. He answer. might be able to help you out. He probably knows a way to keep animals from running away from you. I see. You do have a point. Also, since his hamsters are called the four dark devas of destruction, <laughs> they might not get scared of me and run away. God, I didn't realize she made that face during this conversation. I know, it's kind of creepy. Just a tad. <laughs> I should look for Gundam right now. Her eyes look scary. I think Gundam's answers might actually freak out. Hey. 
Hajime, thank you for your advice. If you'd like, please come talk to me again. Goodbye. Echo walked off in a hurry. She must be really desperate to put something fucked in. But based on this, I feel like I was able to significantly close the difference between me and Echo. Next time, I might be able to talk to her normally. You mentioned earlier that you don't know much about swords, right? Yeah, I've never held a bamboo sword before. However, people cannot be judged by their appearances. So you've held an actual sword, just not a bamboo sword. <laughs> Of course not. I've only ever held boy swords, not bamboo or real swords. I see. I see. So you're saying you have no use for a sword. Then are you a striker? Or maybe you're a grappler? No. Perhaps you are well versed in firearms. Wait, hold on. What are you talking about? Let me explain it more clearly. I completely suck at all those things. I'm not saying I have poor reflexes, but I already know I'm not the warrior type. I see. Given your strangely perceptive way of seeing things, I assumed that you were, but... However... Just as you said, you do not have the presence of a warrior. Even if you lost your actual memories, you would not easily lose your muscle memory. So basically... Which means... You are not suited for battle in the slightest. <laughs> Becco gave me a curse stare, and I couldn't help feeling a tingle run up my spine. Is she trying to figure out my talent? Does she want to know what it is just in case I pose a threat? I, I don't intend to fight my friends at all. I definitely don't want to do that. Understood. I see. If that's the case, then we must be extremely cautious of those two. Anyway... They know the difference between weakness and strength, and they can compensate for each other's weaknesses. And they both have impressive offensive capabilities. Hmm. If those two formed an alliance, they could truly pose an unmanageable threat. The dangerous alliance Pekka was talking about, she's probably talking about them, right? Dangerous alliance? Are you talking about Akane and Nekamaru? Yes. Though they would only fight in self-defense, they are both perfectly at ease doing it. Plus, the combination of an impressive athlete and team manager poses a formidable threat. Sure. Not just that, though they do not specialize as fighters, their fighting prowess is incredibly high. <laughs> However, if something were to happen, Hold on, what are you talking about? It's pretty weird that you're assuming we'd ever need to fight them in the first place. We'll get out of this place if we co cooperate with each other. Why do we need to think about fighting anyone? Hajime, you speak the truth. I, too, would prefer to avoid any senseless killing. However... There are times when swords must be drawn, whether you want that or not. What does that mean? Every human being has a duty to fulfill their destiny. That will never change, and there is no need for it to ever change. Hey. However, I do not dislike your way of thinking, Hajime. Huh? Oh, hey, Pekko. Even though I called for her, Pekko walked away without looking back at me once. I thought I was understanding Pekko, but now I feel like I don't know her at all. It feels like she's making an even more intense face than usual. Is she worried about something? I can't tell if I should ask or not. Hey, are you alright? You're starting to turn pale. What? Was I? What, what? What were you even trying to do? No. Well, well, actually... I was trying to smile. Huh? Huh? Mayuru told me that I'm the only one who doesn't smile for her pictures. So I thought I should do something about it, but it's harder than I thought. Hey. So will you try to make me laugh? This is sudden. 
It's kind of hilarious too. You know. <laughs> Anything is fine as long as it's funny. So give it a try. You're acting like you lowered the bar, but it's still really high. Could it be? I know. If it's possible, I'd like it to have something to do with animals. I love that, like, underneath her tough exterior, exterior, she just wants to pet fluffy animals. Yes, that is, that is fantastic. <laughs> that might be something that stirs warm feelings inside me. That may be, but, um, then... A panda walks into a restaurant, eats, shoots, and leaves. Yes. I already know that they do that. I <laughs> know! It went over her head! <laughs> I watched the delivery, and it's not even that clever of a joke. <laughs> However, pandas are nice. Their white and black fur is very adorable and fluffy. Someday, I would like to try to touch one. Beggar's face seemed to soften a little when she said that. Even though my joke completely failed planned, well, I guess this'll do. I apologize. You helped me, Hajime. I can't really smile that well. I've been like this ever since I was young. The childhood friend I always played with used to cry and say my face was scary. There was also a time when my first love coldly told me that too. Even so, I never really needed to smile, so I never thought about it all that much. And because I completely neglected it, I forgot how to do it entirely. It's not normal for someone to forget how to smile. Was she subjected to an outrageous amount of harsh training? Or is there some other reason? Hey. Hajime, what's wrong? Ah, uh, nothing. Anyway, I'll make sure to tell you a funnier joke next time. That would be wonderful. I'll be looking forward to it. I kept chatting with Pekko for a while and spent time thinking of ideas for most jokes. Listen to this, Hajime. I have discovered a revolutionary technique. Revolutionary technique? Are you talking about how to smile? Yes. Yes, Hiyoko taught it to me. I have a bad feeling about this. I have not attempted it yet, but I have properly memorized how to do it. First, I must hook my fingers to both sides of my mouth. And if I pull them to the side and up a little, it will resemble smiling. That's just for show, though. However... However, that is not all. Apparently, there is a magic spell you can use in this state to make yourself and anyone else laugh. A magic spell? So basically... Apparently, I must pull both sides of my mouth with my fingers and chant, I was born on a spaceship. It does not say spaceship. <laughs> it's pirate ship. Oh, oh, pirate ship! I literally, like, looked over and in my mind... It Straight up said spaceship. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It happens. Though I'm skeptical, I shall attempt it. You know what, though? Spaceship fits for her, too. No. Stop. This is a prank little kids play on each other. A magic spell? Really? Jeez, Yoko, you do a lot of screwed up things. Ooh. Hajime, why did you stop me? It's nothing you've done wrong, but I don't think you can really call that a smile. I think it'll be more like a smirk or something similar to that. I see. So, just as I thought, there is no way for me to make someone smile since I am incapable of smiling. No, I didn't mean it like that. Mahiro showed me her photos the other day. They were filled with images of smiling faces. I don't know how else to say this, but they were very nice photos. I learned that smiles give people power. 
and I remembered when I was a kid. There was a time when my childhood friend and I nearly got lost in the mountains. Lost in the mountains? You wander away from your parents? No. We were forced into someone's car. Isn't that kidnapping? Well... Well, it was fine until I saw a chance for us to escape. Afterward, we got lost in the mountains. You're being really calm about this, but that's an intense situation. I desperately tried to cheer up my friend, but I was also scared and worried. My friend could sense that as well, so in the end, I ended up making him cry. <sighs> if I had been able to smile and tell him that everything was going to be okay, even if it was a lie, I might have been able to take away his fear. Hmm. I haven't grown at all since then. So, what happened? Were you both saved? Well, obviously. Of course. My sword is a tool to protect people. I made sure I protected my friend. Heck, huh? Peko became strong for that sake, but because she became too strong... Hey, Peko, I want to help out too, if you don't mind. <laughs> huh? Let me help you until you can finally smile on your own. Isn't it too early to give up now? I see. Hajime, to tell you the truth, there is one more thing I would like you to do. Me? I... I need, um... No, wait, hold on. I need to prepare myself a bit more. When the time comes, I'll tell you. So, until then, please forget what I said. Excuse me. I don't really understand, but Pekka quickly vanished. Why were her cheeks red? Could it be? No, that's impossible. There's no way Pekka is interested in me. There's no way, right? Oh my god, of course the first person Hodge may actually suspect of having feelings for him is the one person who actually fucking isn't. I know, right? <laughs> As I went back to my room, I kept telling myself over and over that there's no way. Hajime, um, about our previous matter. Y yeah? So, the time has finally come. I don't really know why, but my heart is racing like crazy. This place is no good. Let's talk somewhere else. I followed Pekko until we arrived at the beach. We were completely alone. Pekko's blushing. She looks like she wants to say something, but she's keeping silent. And this is it. There's no question. I should man up and say it first. I... Oh, um, <laughs> I no. love you? Immediately. Oh my god, what do I do? Say I love you. I, I love you. Yeah. And... <laughs> what are you talking about? Huh? What do you mean, love? I don't understand. Anyway. However, I'll hear you out. After all, you've been listening to me. Crap, I think it's something different. I... Becca, what? Can't we just be friends? You want to be my friend? You're really strange for saying you want to be friends with me. Huh, I made a mistake somehow. I... Yeah, it was... Apparently it was this one. Um, I'm just gonna ask you outright. What do you want me to do? Y yes of course Actually. I was wondering if you could give me advice on asking someone out on a date. Date? What? For fool, don't say it out loud. What would happen if someone heard us? May I ask who you're interested in? No. I can't say that. However, you're the only one I can ask for help with this. I beg of you, consider it a big favor to me. 
One thing I know for certain is the person she wants to ask out isn't me. <laughs> well, that's obvious. I knew it. Even if we are getting along, there's no way someone like Pekka would ask me out. If we were able to escape this island, I'm thinking about asking him out. And when I do, I want him to see my smiling face this time. This time? Do you mean your childhood friend? Right now, he's been forced to fight a lonely battle. A battle against himself. Oh, against himself? He's sick or something? Maybe that's why Echo wants him to see her smile. Fine, I got it. I'm not all that experienced myself, but... I think it's fine if you don't overthink it and just casually ask him. Let's do something together. You want him to smile, right? You just have to make him feel like smiling. However... It, it'd be great if I could do that, but I don't know if I can. Hmm, then... Why don't you imagine his smiling face? His... smiling face? <laughs> I see. Now that you mention it, I remember this one incident. At the time, he had this really handsome smile. Jeez. I guess Pekko does know how to smile. That's it. As long as you make that face and you ask him out, there's no way he'd say no to you. I see. Hajime, even though it's only a little, I feel like I understand now. Smiling is not something you have to force. When your heart gets warm, smiles come to you naturally. I was too desperate to protect something. So I had completely forgotten something as simple as that. Thank you. Thank you for making me remember that which is most important to me. No, I really didn't do much. By the way, what incident did you remember? <laughs> it's something that happened when we were kids. We went to the zoo and he ended up picking a fight with the king of the monkeys. To protect him, I threw myself into the fray. As Pekka reminisced about her childhood friend, she looked cuter than I'd ever seen her before. I'm a little jealous of her friend, but I guess this is fine too. Because now that Pekka is opening up to me, there's no doubt that a strong bond is formed between us. And her underwear. <laughs> Staring at the ocean for a while, listening to Pekko's stories, I went back to my room. Dang, 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 dang.